There are some risky things in life. It's a risk to make a bold career move or to start a business when you don't know what the outcome will be. For some, it's even a risk to get married, especially when they don't see many people staying married. But when it comes to faith, when it comes to being a Christian, would you take the risk of believing in God first before you see the miracle? Could you risk completely trusting God first before there is any sign of a breakthrough? In fact, can you risk waiting on God's timing before you try and take matters into your own hands? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians that God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Meaning that there is a strong contrast between human wisdom and divine wisdom. Human wisdom would say, I must destroy my enemies. Gotta give them no chance. But divine wisdom in Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 tells us to love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Human wisdom will say, I must celebrate when those who are against me suffer or when they struggle. But divine wisdom tells me in Proverbs 24, in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17, do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when your enemy stumbles. And I would think, well, this doesn't make sense because my enemies want to destroy me. They only want to see me struggle. But the word of God is telling me to love them. To not be glad when they stumble. Now, now I would like to tell you today that your enemies are placed in your life for a reason. We all have enemies. From the person at work who's trying to make us look bad. To the neighbor that's always trying to start some kind of argument. Even the person or people who walked away and, be and betrayed you after you were faithful and loyal. We all have enemies. We all have critics. We have naysayers. People who want to see us do good but never better than them. But you see the Bible, the word of God, divine wisdom tells us that God will make your enemies your footstool. The same people that provoke you, antagonize you, belittle you and stress you out, those people will be made your footstool. Now footstool in the Bible is symbolic of humanity. It's a low place. It's under your feet meaning it's not significant. The term footstool actually points to the one who's using the footstool as being far superior than the footstool itself. And it's amazing that while God calls the earth his footstool, he still humbled himself. He still left heaven for earth. He still traded glory for human flesh. And to become the one who lived on that footstool. And while we are not footstool to our enemies, we are required to act with humility towards them. Do not place yourself too highly in your own judgment and be offended that not everyone will like you. Don't take offense when you encounter someone who actually opposes you. We are required to be humble, to be meek, and not to retaliate. To show the same love as Christ, who knew that the people on this earth, the people who he created, would one day crucify him, but yet, still love them. Now we should also look at our enemies and false tools from a different angle because they are necessary for elevation. Your enemies would make the perfect false tool to get you to the next level. Judas had a role to play in God's plan. He wasn't a perfect Christian. Despite having the privilege of walking with Jesus and talking with Jesus, no he wasn't the best example amongst his disciples but he was a footstool he had to betray jesus he had to oppose jesus in order 
in order for the Lord to be elevated and to fulfill his mission. Goliath was also a fool's too. He had to be that one person that no one else wanted to fight. But he also ended up being that one person who showed everyone that it doesn't matter how big the giant is, there is no giant too big for God. It was a footstool for for David. And Pharaoh was a footstool for Moses. Joseph's brothers, well, a footstool for Joseph. Even Nebuchadnezzar who threw the three Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace was also a footstool. Enemies on the surface level, but stepping stones on a spiritual level. Now, one of the most famous Bible passages, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures, and leads me to still waters. And if you continue reading to come to verse 5, He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Another translation says, You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Now, why would God prepare a table for you, a feast for you in the presence of your enemies? Would it not be a far more reasonable expectation for the Lord to be your shepherd, for him to make you lie down in green pastures, for him to provide another way that's not through the valley of the shadow of death? And finally, would it not be a reasonable expectation for God to defeat all of my enemies and then prepare a table for me to feast in peace? But that's not the case. God prepares a table, a feast for you in the presence of your enemies, not in the absence, but in the presence of your enemies. And for us to understand that, we need to look at Isaiah chapter 55 where God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Like the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Remember that God uses the foolish things to confound the wise things. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And if you look at the journey in Psalm 23, you have just come through a dark journey. You have just come through dark shadows and then the Lord prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And this tells me that as long as God is leading, as long as he has leading your life, then there's nothing that can touch a believer who's walking with God. And secondly, a table set before my enemies suggests to me that the battle is not ours. Because if it was my battle, I would have been focused on the enemy who's fighting me. And I would most likely overlook the table that God has set before me because I will be weary of my enemies. But the Lord does not conduct himself in the way that we do. God sets a table before your enemies to demonstrate his care and provision, even in the most unlikely of circumstances. He can give you peace in the middle of your darkest hour. He can give you peace in the middle of your storm. God sets a table in front of your enemies to show that, to show and demonstrate his power. Your enemies can see you, but they cannot touch you. With God on your side, your enemies will see you being elevated, but they will not be able to stand in your way. With God on your side, your enemies will inadvertently become your footstool and they will have no other choice but to look up as the Lord lifts you. No enemy you face can stand in front of the Lord on your side. And I also believe that this scenario is symbolic for a Christian who may be facing adversity. Someone who may be experiencing difficult circumstances, but God can somehow give them peace beyond understanding 
and this is this is the type of believer who rejoices always despite what is going on around them and i think it is the same for you to sit in that table and feast you need to have some level of comfort and peace and in this scenario god is saying i will provide that peace i will provide that comfort i will provide a table for you to feast on even in the presence of your enemies and if we focus on the word prepare the lord prepares a table when you talk about preparation it it connotes that it wasn't something that was that was done casually coaches prepare for football matches in advance everything from team selection tactics it's all prepared for in advance business owners prepare the staffs to face all different types of scenarios parents prepare their children for school i believe that for the lord to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies he already has a plan in mind he has taken every detail into account god takes time to plan what will be on the table where the table will be who will sit and eat at that table who will sit at the table and how you will get to that table he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies and that word preparation implies that thought time and effort has gone into doing that 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 very thing enemies are part of god's plan for your life we will all face enemies that we have to continually overcome but the one promise that we have to hold on to is that despite your enemies despite how much they are how many they are how much they try to provoke you or drag you down the lord has already prepared that table for you to overcome and he will use them to become your food stool so be at peace for the lord has prepared a table for you to feast before your enemies because he will be the one to deal with them we are to continue to be humble we are to continue to have the love of christ exodus 14 verse 14 says the lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace your enemies are in god's hands your enemies are part of god's plan all you need to do is let the lord be your shepherd and let him lead you